Hey everyone, welcome to another Elvis story video. So this time I am going to discuss the Elvis Presley and Johnny Rivers Memphis, Tennessee song controversy. Now, why do I call it a controversy? Well, for a number of years it's been rumored that musician uh, Johnny Rivers, who was also a friend of Elvis's, purposely recorded and released the song Memphis, Tennessee uh, before Elvis could, knowing that Elvis had already recorded it and had planned on releasing it. So now, who is Johnny Rivers? Some of you might ask. Um, Johnny Rivers was a singer-songwriter uh, who came onto the scene in 1958 when he first recorded with uh, Gold Records. Uh, Johnny had, I think, um, nine top 10 hits and 17 uh, top 40 hits also. And uh, one song you guys might be familiar with that he did was um, Secret Agent Man. And it goes, Secret Agent Man. That was Johnny Rivers' song. Um, so now, getting back to uh, the 60s, now in, early, in the early 60s, Elvis and Johnny became friends, really good friends actually. And so now Elvis um, recorded the song Memphis, Tennessee on January 12th, 1964. And just to give you guys a little history about the song Memphis, Tennessee, it was originally uh, written and released in 1959 by Chuck Berry. And then in 1963, uh, a musician named Lonnie Mack um, released an instrumental version of it. And so then in 1964, like I said, in January 12th, Elvis recorded it and now at this time I guess that he was close friends with Johnny Rivers and he had Johnny over the house and he said um, Johnny I just you know recorded this song Memphis Tennessee you want to listen to it so they Johnny's like yeah sure so Elvis played it for him and so now after that took place um now the rumor goes that Johnny heard that song, liked it, went out and recorded his own version. But in actuality, what happened was, see now Elvis recorded uh, his version on January 12th. Now Johnny, who often played at the Whiskey A Go Go, recorded a live album, actually three days later after Elvis had recorded it and that album included um, the name of the album actually was uh, Johnny Rivers at the Whiskey A Go Go and so on January 15th he records this live album at the Whiskey and one of the songs is Memphis now well he called it Memphis it's actually Memphis Tennessee but on Johnny's album it's called Memphis after that um, the song is released and now Elvis at this point there um, Johnny already heard it from Elvis apparently and so Elvis caught wind of this and it's rumored by a couple of guys that were around Elvis that Elvis was pretty upset about it that Johnny went out after he heard Elvis's version um, that Johnny went out and recorded his own and actually released it before Elvis could. So now, basically what I want to do for you guys, I found a story about this. And um, I want to read it to you guys. And then after that, I want to give you my opinion on the whole situation on whether or not uh, Johnny actually, I guess you could say, stole from Elvis, you know. I want to give you my opinion uh, of what I think of the whole situation with that. So this story comes from 
uh, what's called Elvis History Blog. <clears throat> and it goes like this. In Careless Love, The Unmaking of Elvis Presley, biographer Peter Baralnik reported that singer Johnny Rivers musically sucker-punched Elvis by rushing out his version of Memphis in 1964 when he knew Elvis planned to release the same song as a single. Goralnik had interviewed Rivers and knew his side of the story, but chose to believe some, some of Elvis's boys who claimed Rivers had blindsided Elvis. After Elvis heard Johnny's version of Memphis, Goralnik claimed that Elvis said he didn't want to see Johnny anymore. When Careless Love was published in 1999, Johnny Rivers quickly reacted. Elvis and I were friends for years, he stated, and I am personally offended and outraged that Peter Goralnik has joined the ranks of writers who have tried to profit from Elvis's downfall by taking a cheap shot with information that was not accurate. Johnny Savage, a DJ at KALX Radio in Berkeley, supports Goralnik's view of the Rivers incident. At issue is not the province of the Chuck Berry song itself, Savage claims. Lonnie Mack had a hit with an instrumental version less than a year prior in 1963. At stake was honor and trust. Elvis was proud of his January 1964 re-recording and house visitor and new pal Johnny Rivers made it clear he was enamored with it by asking Elvis Presley to play it again and, again and again. Then Johnny Cotton issued a version not telling Elvis beforehand. When it hit the radio that, that May, Elvis realized he'd gotten burned and told his guys to keep Rivers away. Rivers took the friendship and flushed it down the toilet for a hit single. So now there's, there's evidence on both sides of the controversy. There's evidence to support both sides of Johnny Rivers incident in question. First, Johnny Savage's belief that Rivers had burned Elvis is based on statements made by several members of Presley's personal entourage. According to Savage's research, the first mention of the incidents critical of Rivers probably appeared in Marty Lacker's 1979 book, Elvis Portrait of a Friend. In later books, Elvis insiders Alan Fortas and Lamar Fike told similar stories. As further support for his belief that Rivers was at fault, Goralnik cited interviews he had done with Joe Esposito, Jerry Schilling, and Red West. In fairness, Goralnik did include the following disclaimer in his book. It should be noted that Johnny Rivers today denies the knowledge and the rift. Probably the most damning statement can be found in Alan Fortas' book. It reads as follows. Now this is from Alan Fortas. Johnny told Elvis he loved it, thought it was a great groove. And then the next thing you knew, Johnny cut it himself with the same arrangement. Memphis was Johnny's first hit going all the way to number two and made him a star. Elvis wouldn't release his own version for a long time, then because he didn't want to look as if he were copying Johnny. After that, Johnny was on Elvis's SHIT list forever. Barred from coming to any, any of Elvis's homes at all. Wow. Rivers outraged when Goralnik's book came out. After Goralnik's book came out, Rivers posted a news release on his website expressing outrage at the insinuation that he intentionally released his version of Memphis in an attempt to steal the song from his friend Elvis. He explained that he had been playing the song for years while he was an unknown struggling musician. My producer, Lou Adler, chose Memphis to be released, Rivers insisted, not me. Only after the album Johnny Rivers at the Whiskey A Go Go had been released first and was a success before any single was released. Adler corroborated Rivers' statement, adding, at the time, Johnny let me make the decisions. 
When we cut Johnny's first live whiskey album, I didn't know he had heard any cover recording from Elvis. Rivers also debunked the Gorelnik statement that after Johnny's release of Memphis, Elvis didn't want to see Johnny anymore. Rivers countered with, I was always Elvis's friend. Even his personal guest at many shows for years at the International Hotel in Las Vegas. He gave me his personal table, brought me and my guests backstage, and on more than one occasion introduced me to his audience and had me take a bow. Does that sound like someone who didn't want to see any, someone anymore? Johnny Savage believes that Elvis was just being gracious and magna magnanimous to Rivers in Las Vegas. It was from Elvis's homes that Rivers was banned. That's what this guy Johnny Savage is saying. To capture the testimony of Elvis's boys, Rivers offered a letter from Elvis insider Larry Geller, who wrote, What P Peter Goralnik wrote is inaccurate. I was around Elvis in 1964 and never heard him say anything about Johnny and the song Memphis. Elvis loved Johnny and respected him. Now, um, here is my opinion on the whole situation. Um, I think what I think is true, um, number one, off the bat, I don't think Johnny purposely meant to steal the song Memphis, Tennessee from Elvis. I just don't believe that. That, uh, the reason being because, like I said when I was reading the article, his manager actually released the song Memphis, uh, Tennessee in May and he did it you know because he had control of what songs got released Johnny is not the one that released the song okay so right right there that says something that Johnny had no intention of um, stealing from Elvis and also the fact that um, Johnny says Memphis uh, Tennessee was a song that uh, even before he knew Elvis, he would go around uh, singing in different clubs. It was just one one of those songs he liked. So he, uh, when he sang it at the whiskey, basically he sang it because it was one of his personal favorites. You know, so right there, those two things, the fact that his manager released it and not Johnny tells me that right there that uh, Johnny had no intentions of trying to steal from Elvis. I don't know. But, um, but now with that being said, I do believe that Elvis was upset. The reason why I believe Elvis was mad at first, I think, was because you got, um, basically all the Memphis Mafia saying that, yeah, Elvis was pretty mad when he heard the song that uh, was released. You know, basically Alan Fortas said it. Alan Fortas said it in his book that once Elvis heard that, that Johnny was on the SHIT list. And you had uh, other guys, um, who else said it? I think Marty Lacker said it uh, years ago also. Uh, I believe Jerry Schilling has said it um all the guys that i just mentioned i think even red west said said it also so you're talking about four or five guys who were constantly around elvis saying yeah elvis was pretty pissed when he heard that so that's why and then i mean you got that letter from larry geller defending johnny rivers saying that i know oh, i never heard elvis say he was mad about anything Johnny did well that might not be because you know he wasn't it's just the fact that Larry might not have been there when Elvis heard the song or got wind of it you know what I mean he might not have been in the same room while all the other guys are sitting around Elvis and Elvis hears this and I'm like what the heck is this Larry might not have been there at that point you know 
So at that point, Elvis might have been like, he might have blew his stack. He might have told him, I don't want him around here anymore. I don't trust him because everybody knows um, trust was a huge thing with Elvis. And if you come into his home and, and you steal something, be it an object or an idea he had, to him, that's betrayal. So I think in that moment, according to those four or five guys that were around Elvis, I believe them all. They're all telling the same story that he was upset when he first heard that. So I believe um, Elvis was upset. He might even felt a little betrayed by Johnny. Uh, not knowing that, you know, it was his manager that released the song, you know. So now as far as the part of Johnny uh, over the years going to see Elvis, after this had happened, he went to see Elvis in Vegas many a times, he said in this article. And that every time he went there, you know, Elvis was nice to him. He gave him the, the table in the front, uh, you know, had him come back into the dressing room, always introduced him to the audience, you know. But that's kind of indicative of how Elvis was. He, he was, you know, being cordial and polite. Uh, he might have um, stayed friends with Johnny on the outside. You know what I mean? Um, he didn't necessarily um, cut ties with him completely. Uh, but he was still, that's just how Elvis was. E even if something you did bother him, he would still be polite. That was his uh, natural mannerism towards people was to be polite and this and that. So I believe in the fact that um, I think Elvis, after a while, he might have maybe dismissed it out of his mind, said, you know, all right, whatever. But I think, to be honest with you, I don't know. I believe Elvis might not have trusted him after that. Maybe he was friends with him. Yeah. You know, that's how Elvis was. But I don't know if he necessarily trusted him after that. Um, but then again, you know, like I said, this is just my opinion. Do I personally think that Johnny intentionally stole that song from Elvis just to have it released before Elvis could? I don't think so. I don't think so because he didn't have control over what got released off of his album. So that's where I stand on the, on the whole subject. You know, I would love to hear back from you guys if you guys have heard this story before about you know the memphis uh tennessee song controversy controversy excuse me between elvis and johnny rivers uh like i said i think uh elvis might have been upset at first i think he might have been very upset at first and very hurt but i think as time went by he was just uh, i think he in his mind he just uh, may have felt betrayed and after that because it's a known fact after that happened Johnny was never invited back to any of Elvis's houses ever again I mean he might have saw him on the outside you know at different shows and was nice to him but it seemed kind of clearly obvious after that that uh Johnny may have lost Elvis's trust a bit after that, you know, but who knows? Um, like I said, I'd love to know what you guys think about this whole situation. And if you think, uh, I mean, I presented all the evidence to you guys. I'd love to know whether you guys think, um, you know, what's your opinion? Do you think Johnny stole from Elvis? Or do you think, you know, it was just, you know, the whole thing was just bad timing, really. Um, just basically, that's how I feel. That's my opinion. I think the whole situation was just bad timing, and somehow it got twisted, you know. But personally, I think if Elvis were here today and he had the time to do more research on it, and, you know, saw that, you know, Johnny didn't, release his own songs he might have just been like oh all right you know but 
I love to see what you guys think about all this. I personally just don't think Johnny would. I mean, if you're friends with Elvis Presley, the last thing you'd want to do is ruin that friendship. Because not that many people got that close to Elvis to where he would constantly have them over the house. So why would you want to go do something like that and ruin, you know, a good thing between you and Elvis? I just don't think Johnny purposely did that. I really don't. So, all right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed the story. And once again, please let me know what you think about this situation and what your opinion is. I would love the feedback. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing. And uh, if you like the video, just give it a quick like when you're done because uh, it really helps me out and I appreciate it. All right. I hope you're all doing great. And as always, TCB and God bless.